uh, make a motion to our call meeting to order this afternoon for the Northampton License Commission, Wednesday, December 20th. This meeting um, is being Zoom recorded and present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev and commissioners Helen Kahn and Jennifer Ewers. And do we have anybody present for general public comment? Raise a Zoom hand if so. And I don't see any, so we will move on to agenda item number three, application for a short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music Incorporated 274 Main Street for Friday, December 22nd, 7 to 11 p.m. This is for the Sweetback Sisters and uh, is a wine and malt license being sought with a fee waiver. Hello. Hold on, we gotta unmute you. Yep, that's me, sorry. <laughs> okay. There we go. There Hi. I am. Hi, you said everything for me. Hi, I'm Deborah J. Anthony, the Executive Director of the Academy of Music, and it's been a while since I've been before yeah. the, Lit the Liquor Commission. I've just usually been Melissa. Yeah. Um, we will have a new theater manager in, in, in um, place on January 10th. Her name is Melanie, and so you will be um, seeing her Thanks. in the future. Uh, but I'm here um, to request the short-term liquor license for tomorrow evening, Sweetback Sisters. Sure. And is anything changed in how you're doing things? No. Okay. Um, do the other commissioners have any questions or comments for Deborah? I don't. No, nope, no questions. Okay. Then a uh, motion, please, for this one. Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor license for the Academy of Music, along with a fee waiver as, we're, as detailed in item three on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming, Deborah. We look forward to meeting the new Thank manager. Thank you. And just logistics, Annie, can I pick up the uh, license tomorrow? Yes, because the okay. event's tomorrow. Yes. So yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Hi, you too. Happy holidays. Item number four, application for short-term liquor license for the trustees of Forbes Library at 20 West Street, Thursday, January 16th, 5 to 8 p.m. This is in the Hosmer Gallery reception for the Forbes Staff Art Show. This is a wine and malt license with a fee waiver requested. Hello. Hi. How are Faith you? Faith Kaufman, Forbes Library. Good. How are you? Good. I like that painting behind you. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm in my office, and that is one of my favorites in here. Um, what's your? Let us know about your event that you're having. Oh, so this is this is a premiere. Um, <clears throat> it's um, staff came up with the idea and have included invited everyone to participate, and it's going to be a really fun show. And we want to have wine and cheese and all the usual refreshments sounds fun how many um artists do you have participating i am not sure exactly because i'm not the one organizing it yeah. but i think on the poster on the poster there's at least 10 people represented nice that's great it's a great idea i love it and you'll have the same setup as you usually do when you're using that gallery yes okay any questions from helen or jennifer nope i don't have any questions yeah, no question. Can you add anything else? To the no, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Then we're ready for a motion. Do you want to take it, Jennifer? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I put forward a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license as detailed in item number four for the trustees of Forbes Library on Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. And sorry, the fee waiver too. Yes, please. Yes, I'll modify my motion to also include the fee waiver. Second. And um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great, thank you. Thank you. Next up, item number five, applications for short-term liquor licenses, Building 8 Brewing, 320 Riverside Drive. This is for an end-of-year open house with a wine and malt license for Thursday, December 28th from 3 to 10 p.m., Friday, December 29th, 3 to 10 p.m., and Saturday, December 30th from noon to 10 p.m. And do we have O'Brien here? Yes. Hello. 
Hi. How are you? Hanging in there. Kids are going nuts. There's some big holiday coming up, I guess. I heard something about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bananas. No. Um, so what are you up to at this event? I don't think you've done this before. Have you a year end? Uh, no, I haven't really done a year end. We're just kind of, we could use some sales and, uh, we're, uh, I've got a few kegs of stuff that, you know, we try to fill as we go and, uh, we filled a couple and there's some people who just wanted to come in now that we have the tables and such and the booth and everything like that. And hopefully, uh, after we get over the year end hump, we'll get our, uh, paperwork back together again and hopefully be applying for a, a full, full license. Um, I still am unsure if I'm if that space is going to be renewed next door uh, for another year. But uh, if not, we're still going to kind of push ahead with what we've got going. So, um, and just, uh, you know, people always ask. So, and it was, uh, we did pretty good after Thanksgiving. It was a holiday, but a lot of people were away. So hopefully this time, you know, and I'm staying away from New Year's Eve. So I figured, you know, Thursday after work, Friday after work, and then uh, Saturday, you know, so we'll have some uh, free apps out and stuff too. Nice. That sounds nice. Yeah. Any questions from the other commissioners? No questions here. No questions. Okay. I did have a quick question, though. I believe we got a notice that stuff was going to change in the future applications for next year. Is that something that's going to be? Is there going to be something different going on, or um, for one day's? Yes, that okay. will be. I you'll get everyone will get a communication beginning of January about all the changes. Okay, um, great. Yes, so. I more thought I had seen come. something, but yeah. More to come. Um, Excellent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Excellent. All right, then we're ready for a motion. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the short-term liquor licenses as detailed in item five on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Item number six, application for a new common victor license for Mochinat LLC DBA Mochinat at 96 Main Street. And do we have someone here? I see Hi. pastries in the name menu here. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. So, Let us um, know your name for the record, just since this is your first time here, we haven't met yet. Yeah, my name is Vincent Oyan. I'm one of the owner for the for the Mochinat, the new um new donut for the uh, Northampton area. We are excited. Yes. And, uh, for, mm. Um, I have a question about are you, are all these being baked on site? Yes. Wonderful. I can't wait to see it. They mm -hmm. look beautiful on the the picture yeah. in the window. Yep, and uh, we we don't. Uh, I think the location don't have uh, enough the gas usage, so we use all the donut machine as uh, electric electrical. Oh, okay. So yeah. Okay. I think it will be more efficiency. Yeah. Great. Um, questions from Helen or Jennifer? Um, I see a note. Are are is all the paperwork in Annie, or are we? Still I'm just waiting. We still wait. We we still waiting on the workers come. I'm working on it. I'll send it to you. Like I think it will be done by the end of this week. Okay. And when do you plan to open? Uh, right now we are aiming at February first, next year, twenty twenty four. In about almost two months. Yep. Hmm. Awesome. Jennifer, did you have any questions or comments? No, no questions. Okay. Then I think we're ready for a motion that contingent on the paperwork. Do you want to take it, Jennifer? Sure. I put forward a motion to approve the application for a new common victualler license for a Moshi nut uh, as detailed in item number six, but contingent upon receiving the proof of the workers' comp insurance. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Good luck. All right. Thank you so much.
Item number seven, application for short-term liquor license. This is for the Downtown Northampton Association for Arts Night Out for the following Fridays from 5 to 8 p.m., January 12th, February 9th, March 8th, April 12th, May 10th, June 14th, July 12th, August 9th, September 13th, October 11th, November 8th, and December 13th in 2024. is a wine and malt license, and applications have been received for Available potential enterprises at 126 Main Street, Bangsies, LLC, DBA, Bang Bang, Body Art, 7 Armory Street, Click Workspace, 9.5 Market Street, Historic Northampton, 26 Bridge Street, Marsam, LLC, DBA, Michelson Galleries, 132 Main Street, Thorns Marketplace, 150 Main Street, Assemble, LLC, DBA, Assemble, Made and Curated, 164 Main Street, the Northampton Center for the Arts at 33 Holly, Northampton Senior Center at 67 Cons. Lulu Blue LLC DBA Pinch at 179 Main Street and the Smith College Museum of Art at 20 Elm Street. Hello, Jillian. Hello. Sorry to make you do so much work, you know. <laughs> okay. It's I'm happy to plug all those special places in the lead up to that holiday O'Brien was referencing. Yeah, and I think everybody, you know, Arts Night Out has kind of, you know, gone to the wayside in 2023. And I think everybody's very excited to get it up and running and revamped in 2024. So I'm excited yeah. to see such a long list of folks that are still on board. <laughs> yes. Yes. That sounds great. Um, do you have any ch changes to the event now that you're at the helm? Not right now. Um, no. I think we'll probably you know, discuss a revamp or how to expand or what we're going to do in the future. But I think right now, everybody's plea is to just continue with the foundational work to rebuild um, yep. and get it moving in 2024. Yep. Sounds reasonable. Um, any questions or comments from Helen and Jennifer? No, nope, just sounds great to me. Good to see that nice long list and all those dates. So yeah, looking forward to it. And I hope you all come. You yeah, know. absolutely. So Absolutely. many opportunities. <laughs> yep. Candy, may I ask a quick question? Did you receive all of the paperwork for each? Yeah, I got um, I got all the applications that I think Jillian has at the moment. Um, and historically, Arts Night Owl does not have to provide liquor liability or HIPS certification. Is that right, Natasha? Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank so you. That was under our new that policy. Was in the new year, Arts Night Out will be named under our new liability policy as we become a new 501c3. So oh, that's, that's great. Any, yeah, yeah. So yeah, moving forward. Wonderful. And Andy, you'll need documentation of that, or you'll need something of that on file, or no? Um, I mean, it'd be great to have it once it's once it's in place, but it's not required. Well, you'll have it for my ARPA funding, so the city will have it. Okay, perfect. But yeah, I can totally provide a copy of that. It'll begin in January um, and cover for the year, so. Okay, that's great. Um, I think we're ready for a motion then. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor, a short-term liquor license for Downtown Northampton Association for Arts Night Out as detailed in item seven on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Happy Thank New you. Year. Happy holidays. Thank I hope to see you out in the wild. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Okay, next up, item number eight. We have a continuation of a public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of a common victualler license and entertainment license. Transferring from Iron Horse Ventures Incorporated, DBA, Iron Horse Music Hall to the Parlor Room Incorporated, DBA, the Iron Horse, 2022 Center Street. Proposed manager of record is Chris Freeman. And, um, is there a motion to open the public hearing? Uh, I move to open the public hearing. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. And do we have anybody present for public comment on this particular item? 
Seeing none, we can jump right in. Hello, Randy and Chris. Hello. How is everybody? Good, Good, you. Good thank you. Um, so let's start with some updates. Eric, We I know that you emailed Annie today with, and I think you're, uh, can you unmute Annie? Yeah. You, Eric, I mean. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. So I know the 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 update that Annie received was was very general in that paperwork still is not it's the yes. Yeah. So out. we they're still they're still working through certain filings that have to happen to get our certificate of good standing. So that we're in the same boat as we were last month and there's still a, accountants are gonna need some additional time. Can you be more specific? Are we, I mean, is this? So all of our DOR, um, all of that has always been current. Um, all of our meals taxes and all of the necessary um, DUA as we had provided, but there are tax returns. Um, it is my understanding that when we were closed that there are um, some returns that have to be completed and that's what they're working on. So, um, as, uh, you know, as I had mentioned last month, it's a process and they're still working through it because we were closed for several years. And it was, my understanding was that, um, that we were caught up on all of DOR, which we were, but not on the returns. So all of the, re all of the monthly returns have been completed, but, um, there's still certain tax return items that are in the works. And that's why we've are in need of some additional time. And where is the, the, who needs the time specifically? Is everything out of your hands and with the DOR or is there, are, are there requirements on you that have not been met? No, with the, the, any, any additional information, if it's requested from our accountants were, is immediately sent to them. So everything's out of your offices and with the DOR? No, it's not. It's out of our office and with our accountant. And why is it not with the DOR then? Because it's still they're still working through what has to be filed. So this, it's a this. I'm skeptical with thought with in hearing this information. Well, because I'm there's... sorry. I mean, I don't. There's nothing. There's nothing that we're trying to hide, and there shouldn't be any skeptical. It has to be the return has to be completed in order for us to receive a good standing certificate. Oh no, I understand okay. that. It's yeah. just it will be that this is the second continuation and that's after yep. the October meeting. So yes. that's really the third continuation right. of this issue. Yep. So I think you can understand our frustration and yep. skepticism. I think you should also understand that as well. But um, Randy and Chris, where does this, how is this impacting the work that you're doing? Um, oh, Randy, you want to take it? Yeah, no, I mean, and so, you know, I, I, Eric was in contact with us and said that, you know, the most likely um, that he, you know, he should have everything filed in January, that uh, um, we should be able to have um, the liquor license transfer approved in the February license commission meeting. That's probably as late, you know, anything beyond that is starting to impact us, um, given that it'll take a while to, to actually complete the transfer, but that's about as late as we can accommodate. Okay. Um, Chris, did you have anything you wanted to add, or and it's okay if you don't? Yeah, no, not not right now. Okay. Um, Helen and Jennifer, thoughts and questions? Yeah, my thoughts are just it's surprising that it would take this long. Is this? I mean, here's my confusion: is this that uh, like this month some new information came your way that you had to do these filings? It seems, or is this? This sounds like it's something you knew two months ago and and have they your accountants just been working day and night on these returns and just can't get uh, them? I think I, I, th th we did not have all this information unfortunately in terms of what would have been required to get those certificates uh, as um, as some certificates were obviously presented so I can't answer that fully we did just find some of the stuff out over last month so you know look it's my companies we take responsibility we we're moving forward with the process with all of these and you know, it is on all fronts, it's time consuming. There's multiple deals and multiple pieces to each of these puzzles. And, 
you know, we went from having a hundred plus people employed to having four and had, you know, been shut down for a period of time and then had to reopen with fewer people. And then through this whole process of the decision-making of, and all of the sale processes, it's not just one license that had to be, you know, sold and the process that goes along with that, but, but four licenses and it, it is consuming of every day and many, many hours, um, including, you know, a large deal that you know, we're going to talk about shortly. That's not, this has not been a, an easy process on, on any front. And it is, um, it is also happening where other people are equally busy through this entire process and being able to get in front of people and be able to, you know, make everybody jump that needs to jump is also a process. So it's the best I can put it and taking it seriously and trying to get it all wrapped up and not looking to harm anybody. And hopefully as, you know, especially with the iron horse, knowing that there's, you know, there is a process to what they've got to do and that they're working through that where it's not um, an imminent opening that we're hoping that all of this gets finalized in enough time where there's not going to be any issues and we'll definitely stay in touch with them as we have. And is this the last piece as a paper? Is this just the paperwork that you need to submit in order to, for the license, for the liquor license piece to go through? Or are there other things? I mean, is this? No, everything else we're, I mean, everything Randy can else. speak to that better, but I think we're just, um, it's just this. Know, yeah, it's just this. It just seems yeah. like you know, it'd be a very high priority to get as many accountants as yeah. you can working on this. Um, yep. So it's I, just, have one, it's just surprising I have one cost. question yeah. on, on this. If the, if the license transfer happens in February, what is the, when, how long does it take us? When are we actually able to open with that license? I'm gonna let Annie take that cause that's an ABCC. Yeah, um, I wish I had better, like a more precise answer for you, but it, it could be a few weeks. It could be a few months. It really all- So what's the, the worst case scenario? the worst case the longest it could take yeah i have one on my desk that's over a year old and it hasn't been approved but um are there cir there must be circumstances with that particular application that are because that's a uh, yeah but... that, i get i mean that one's not not cut and dried but also i mean that's worst case he asked for worst case that's right uh I don't know. I wish it, I wish. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I'm just, I'm trying to get a feel for it within the normal process of how these things go. What's what the time frame is because I just, and then, yeah. Cause I just want to make sure we do have, we're booking shows right now for May. Um, and we have plans before that to also be open. So I think that if we're, that it, we, we just need to figure out what our, uh, you know what what the what the time frame is and i, I think I mean, in generally if I, if, if I can be just yeah. on some of our transfers and i know times have changed but um we've had them in through the years as in as short as two weeks and as long as six weeks um has been kind of uh what we've had with our transfers but uh, typically you know within four to six weeks we've had everything completed on on their end but i can't speak for what what annie and the commission's been seeing but yeah no that's in terms all of our transfers we've had yeah. those in the past yeah no i have um a simple change of manager application that's been on my desk for two months um and that's simple that's just changing the manager of record they're behind i don't know why um but the amount of outstanding applications i have right now is it's it's the most i've had since in six and a half years um annie would the would the fact that they will have a transfer in hopefully by this time by spring in process if there's an application on the desk are they precluded in any way from getting a wine and malt seasonal yes, license they are if there's an application if there's an on-premise application pending at the abcc they cannot get a short-term one-day license and they can't get a seasonal wine and malt no So as soon as this process begins, we can't get single day licenses. Um, no, as soon as as soon as the ABCC has received the application, the transfer application, um, you are not allowed to get any one day licenses. Let me just double check, but I'm. 
Okay, that's an important, I think that's an important thing for us to us to know, because I think it, yeah. Annie, could they apply for just asking if they, could they apply for a seasonal um, and when an application gets submitted, then that seasonal would be um, extinguished and the transferred all alcoholic would come into force? I mean, if, if we're talking about Janu or January or being approved at a February meeting, there's, I mean, the seasonal, if they applied for a seasonal, it would have to be at the January meeting and then it would go to the ABCC. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be approved by the time, if the paperwork is in by the end of January, it wouldn't even be approved by the time the transfer goes to the ABCC. Um, and so Chris, yes. Um, the local licensing authority cannot grant one day licenses to any person that has an on premise license application pending before it. So, no. and we're talking about timing again, and I'm hearing January, maybe February. I mean, this is, I feel like Eric playing really fast and loose with a lot of livelihoods here in the livelihood of the city. Um, so, is it January. <laughs> I guess what I heard was the paperwork would be in by the end of January, but it wouldn't be heard until the February meeting. But that's correct me if I'm wrong. And is that right, Eric? Is that what you're saying now? Yes. It's like not even yep. until February that we can approve right. the transfer. Wow. And what is your, you seem to have a certain level of confidence with January. What is what what is behind that confidence of of things coming together in January? You are you asking me? Is I didn't yes, hear you asking. Yeah. So I, I'm just telling you what I've been told, and I again, that's why I'm I'm trying to be cooperative and trying to answer what I can answer. But if there is a if there is a specific date that um, that you guys have shows. And if there is a concern about the length of time on the ABCC, I guess what I'm asking the commission, if there is a better way to, until all of this is submitted, if there's a way through a seasonal, and I understand any what you mentioned, but I'm just thinking, trying to think along the lines of if there is a, an approach to a seasonal we will, license. Absolutely. We will pursue that to, to the umpteenth degree, to the best that we can to assist them. Right. right now, the focus of this conversation is going to remain on the continuance of your paperwork. Yes. And so. a seasonal license, it expires January 15th and is basically out of commission until April 1st. So that. But I'm saying then this, like, but if they had that licensed, if they had some events happening and they had that license in force, until such time as this license was approved and the pro the premises inspected and everything done by the ABCC, is that a possibility? As this hasn't been submitted to the ABCC yet. Um. So, but the are you are you talking about after April first? I'm just talking to make certain that they would have a license to allow them, if necessary, if they had events during the period. And then this license would, so they would have a license in April. And then if this were heard in April and approved, we know that they would have an approved license from the January meeting. Um, and, and the ABCC wouldn't have this in front of them until that license was approved. And then once this all alcoholic license were put in front of the commission and approved, then that would extinguish the seasonal license. I don't think I'm following because it sounds like you're you're talking about maybe the transfer wouldn't go through until the April meeting. Well, I'm asking you if it would if that if the situation were such where you can't have two you can't have two licenses in front of the ABCC. No, you can't. Right. So as the next meeting, the January meeting is when the seasonal is that when the requests for seasonals go in? Any meeting couldn't be a, when a request goes in. It's just there's a certain period of time because a legal notice needs to be published, a butters needs to be sent out. Um, so I'm just asking if it were if it would cover the iron horse if a seasonal license were able to be submitted and approved because they have all of their paperwork for the all alcoholic. If there were a seasonal license that they could submit for, 
that could be approved, then there wouldn't be two licenses in front of the ABCC at the same time. And then once, once all of the returns in the good standing certificate are set, whenever that gets in front of the ABCC, that other license could be extinguished. So this, I mean, the line of questions here is concerning me because here we are, what we're trying to do is get this all in front of the ABCC by February, right? Isn't that what we're now talking about? And so anyway, this discussion of like, oh, let's have them covered in April. I mean, because well, then that, that, it's yeah, in no, front the of reason them. why I was asking, she said it but, can't be in front of the ABCC at the same. In other words, right. it could be in, it, it, I'm trying to not harm the iron horse where if two licenses, they, they can't, you can't have an application for both. Well, and if, if so a license is in February and if it's going to take more than what was typical in terms of time frame, that's why I was asking the question. Right, but it's, it's going to be in front of them in February. And as soon as it's in front of them, then they can't use that seasonal we're, license. We're or, you know, this yeah. conversation is moving to problem solving. Yes. It's the problem that we already have. And we that's and it. all I really want to talk about is the timeline for yep. the work that is required to tie this up. And then we'll deal with any potential issues and we will do, right. you know, I, Chris and Randy, you have my assurances and everybody's on the commission that we will do everything we can within our power to um, assist and move things along to the best of our ability with the ABCC. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, did you have anything that you wanted to add to the, the timeline we're talking about? I don't, I don't. Just um, the, the t timeline is concerning. I just think because time is important, especially if we're looking at May shows and working backwards. So, so I can just say that the accountants really need to um, complete their task and and help us all to move forward. Yep. It would have been helpful because this is this is really all pretty vague. I mean, it would have been very helpful to have the accountant here to lend some mm -hmm. credibility to the information that we need to be receiving in terms of. How I, I honestly don't understand how this has gotten three months, you know, three months out, and it sounds as if there's a ball being moved constantly, and and different things are being required of you guys that you anticipate, and that's I'm I'm I am genuinely confused by that and concerned about it. Here's my concern too. I mean, you know, because it's. Uh... I mean, because we could say, no, it has to be January 17th. I mean, what is the, how come it can't be fast-tracked and aim for that January 17th meeting? I mean, that gives them a whole extra month to-, to Well, it isn't, and that's the problem. And even from the previous November meeting, when we've looked at the time frame and what's there as we're dealing on another situation with another license that um, has an, just an extreme amount of time and that it, it, it is not- during the holiday period um, and also during tax time and all else, there's just been a lot at play. So I can't answer for anyone other than just the reality of the, the calendar just continues to not be our friend when it comes to physical work days. And especially during this period from, which is what we were concerned about on one of the previous meetings from the Thanksgiving period until through the January period. Um, and especially given where there have been a lot of people out of the office, which is neither here nor there, but uh, we're back in, in even just our office where we've had a number of people out with COVID again after a, a period of time where we hadn't had to worry about that. So it's just, it's not been an easy two months. Right. And I understand that. Are the, is it the accountants who are it's not, not in the office? I mean, this is it, now in the accountants. They, yes. It, I, I can't speak for their office and I'm not blaming anybody else. It's It's all of the above. I mean, I'm just feeling like, I don't know, as a license commission, I mean, we have a responsibility. I mean, this is unbelievably frustrating, I know. And I just feel like, you know, we're, you know, being held slightly hostage by this. And I'm, you know, I, it just feels like there needs to be some kind of repercussions. I mean, we have our extended and extended. And, um, you know, I certainly don't, as the license commission, want to jeopardize any deals that are there. Obviously, we've been saying again and again, the reason that we're continuing this is because we want these to go through. But I'm just wishing that there was something. I mean, as you can probably hear from us, our concern is that we say, OK, you know, February and then February comes and goes. And then, you know, I I think there needs to be if there is some way that we can have some kind of ultimatum that we say, if not, then this is what happens. I mean, 
it's my understanding that we probably right now have the authority to pull that license anytime we want. We're just being nice and we're trying to make this go along. And we certainly don't want to pull it and then somehow jeopardize this deal you have. And I don't know if this would jeopardize the deal um, with the Iron Horse. And, and is that a yes? Yes, it absolutely yes, would. Yes, it would. Right. I mean, even if there are a way to 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 get the license another way, I mean, if it weren't this license, I just don't know what the you know what what's in writing with Eric right now. If it doesn't include the license, is then the whole thing? I think for right now, our best the best thing to do is to extend this for another month, and we can handle some of this stuff like internally for the yeah. the best way to the best way to go forward. Right. So you're saying, I mean, just when you say another month, we're talking another two months, because now, you know, he said the end of January, which puts us just so everyone's clear, that puts us to the mid, the February 21st meeting, well, unless we, we have a special hearing. Yeah, I think that we would, okay. given the situation in the timeline, I would suggest having an earlier meeting in February, have a special meeting for it. Yeah. You know, if we have the paperwork by the end of January. Um, Chris and Randy, you all have, you've signed your lease for the space. Yes, we have. At this mm -hmm. point, so... So your um, relationship with Eric is solely around this license. Um, pretty much. I mean, so so the the purchase and sale agreement, including the license, the name, yeah. social media, and, and assets. Yes, but the um, the license was a big part of it. Yeah, but you you've got your lease. The space is yours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything? else that anybody wants to add before I think we're ready to close the hearing and discuss it as commissioners everyone's good Jennifer are you ready for that okay um is there a motion then to close the public hearing for discussion yeah motion to close the public hearing second um Sasha yes Helen yes and Jennifer Yes. All right. So I think we we are all obviously frustrated and I think we've lost patience as well at this point. Um, the options in front of us are to, and, and not in any particular order, one say, sorry, time's up. We're not issuing any further continuances, cancel the license, two, uh, issue a continuance, continuance based on what we deem to be reasonable and revisit at that time, or three, issue what we consider to be a reasonable continuance and have that be the deadline. If the paperwork is not completed at that point in time, then that license is pulled and we discuss how to reissue to the Iron Horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I guess I'm leaning towards the third option. I mean. I'm not inclined, obviously, to pull the license today. I really appreciate right. Chris being in and being in favor of issuing it for another month. Um, and um, I just, I feel like at the at this point in time, I, I don't find the explanations credible um, for what's happening with the paperwork with the DOR. Um, and I, I don't, I wanna move on from this. I want to be able to do what we can to help this business get up and running and not be bogged down in issuing extensions constantly when, when I don't really understand why. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I guess um, I would lean towards doing you know saying end of january and then there need to be repercussions and then there has to be if and if it's not at that time um you know if this hasn't gone through um <clears throat> then we revisit pulling the license and, and reissuing in some way um i totally lost my train i'm so sorry oh oh it, it also requires that we're available for a special meeting yeah which in early february for sure yeah. Um, I don't know where you are, Jennifer, with this. Uh, I'm just, I'm concerned with precedent. You know, it's, I know this is the iron horse and we all hold it in a, in a high regard. And, um, but again, deadlines are important and, and we can't 
do for one what we wouldn't do for another. And that's what I'm hearing sort of as an undercurrent in Helen's um, thinking. So we will do everything to help the parlor room and the iron horse, but but we have to stick to deadlines. We we have to be consistent and, and equitable. And where would that train of thought lead you in terms of the sort of the options as presented, or if there's another option that you you can I think of? Don't have another option. Um, I'm at scenario two or three. Mm -hmm. I've lost track, which is scenario two. I know, so, <laughs> uh, oh, Natasha, hang on. It was, um, to, uh, number two was continue issue, honor the grant a continuance and revisit the conversation in a month or three, grant the continuance with a, end in one month okay. at which point we would cancel the license and um reissue to the iron horse or you know we have later in the agenda of the meeting we have um we're discussing the the three additional licenses that the city has received and how how we would like to use them But in terms of favoring option number two and granting a continuance, I mean, there is truth in the holiday season. There is truth to the, yep. to the, to the, the burdens on accountants at the, the end of the year. I totally agree with that, but also honestly, in the back of my head, this we're talking of this information is coming from somebody who also said that nobody's touring because of COVID. And meanwhile, we've got, venues opening up all over the place that are busy so it's not that you know that is not exactly what i said but hold on hold on just so just so this i don't want you putting the, words the, in my mouth this is a commissioner's discussion and well, not an you're, opportunity you're, to speak. you're mentioning we visit anything with you we will reopen the public hearing so sorry jennifer i i think there's some credibility with the information that we're receiving and that makes it even more difficult to work with so but I do, you are absolutely right. The holidays throw a damper in everything. And in, in, it's in my business. I'm sure it's in your business as well. So that is that is a truth. But the month of January would give, you know, we'll take off the first, maybe even the second for a big hangover. But anyway, then we, and I know weekends don't count, but anyway, then, you know, we have 29 days to get it resolved. Um, so, so, I mean, yeah, my, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm just afraid of saying continue, continue, continue without any kind of um, yep. repercussions is, as you know, deadlines can be effective. Um, so, so anyway, so yeah, I would lean towards saying by the 31st and then we'll have a, um, a special hearing to do the transfer, hopefully, because hopefully that's what we're doing at that point is doing the transfer and not the alternative. Okay. Annie, if we went with that option and we continue for the month and have a special hearing to rediscuss if at that time we deemed that the, it was time to cancel the license, would we need to have notice of a separate public hearing to do that? Um, like it, so you're thinking of continuing continuing it to a special meeting in January or the regular meeting? Well, the regular meeting is January 21st. So, so that cuts, you know, between now and then we have a wash of days where no business is really going to be getting done, probably starting tomorrow through Wednesday of next week, right? Like being realistic. Um, and then we have the new year's holiday so that if we're if we're realistically that doesn't give a lot of time if the next meeting is january 21st so that's one issue we would have to discuss would we have the meeting on a different date but my question is if we grant a continuance 
and get to this next meeting and there's another request for a continuance, if at that time we decide no more, we, we are canceling the license, do we need a separate public hearing to cancel that license? Or can all of that happen during that meeting? I would want to verify with attorney Seawall, but I don't think so because this is a continuation of a transfer and you would just deny the transfer. Okay. Okay. Got um, it. Got it. Got it. So in terms of just to clarify, um, Natasha, so we're on the same page. And also I realize Jennifer, you haven't, you know, fully voiced. I'm not sort of okay. assuming what, where you stand on this, but, um, when I'm talking about, I'm talking about the end of the month, January 17th is our next meeting. I'm saying there's, yeah, I don't, ex yeah, I don't expect that it's, mm -hmm. it'd be great if this was all resolved by then, but I'm, in my mind, we're still giving to the 31st, I guess it is, of January, just, just so we're sort of clear and on the same page. Okay, got it. And of course, ideally, it would be resolved by the 17th, although Eric is suggesting it, that can't happen. And at this point, is it too late to change the January meeting? Mm, no. Oh, yeah. I mean, would that be helpful to push it back later in the month to give parties more time? I actually had a conflict for the January meeting. Um, I was just going to request a time change, but if you, I mean, I think it's, I think it's um, fine if you want to change the date. Well, why don't we do Would that? Would that be helpful, Natasha, if we talked in January about one deadline, you know, one, yeah, yeah, have one date that we're all aiming for in January? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, we and we would need to decide now so that when you make right. your motion to continue it, that you call out the date of the next meeting. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And I will say if we're doing that, I'm not available on the 31st, but I could be on the 30th. I'm just reaching um, for my calendar. Um, I mean, is that potentially going to throw people who are applying who for things for the second half of January. I mean, I guess then if that comes up, then we're going to end up having a special meeting for those folks. So are you talking about things that are in the hopper? Yeah. I have one application. Um, it's the application for the other liquor light, new liquor license. Um, I think it would be fine to wait a week or two. But yeah, I, yeah. That's all. I, that's all I know of. So, Helen, you are not available on the thirty first, or you are. I am. Uh, let me just double check. Sorry. Um. No, I am not. But I could be on the afternoon of the thirtieth. And Jennifer, would that day work for you, the 30th? Yeah. Me as well. Um, all right. So. I mean, and I know we're probably doing this too, because we know that this is going to come up again. <laughs> There's, this is going to be more than one, and we're about to talk about another one. So hopefully all of these will be resolved. And I don't know if it's worth opening it back up to Eric, or we'll be talking to him again to say, like, is that going to do it? Like the 30th in your mind and I guess it's your prerogative Natasha if you want to ask that question I mean or is it enough that he stated end of January to say if we move this to the 30th is that a deadline that he will meet I feel like he said that on the record during the public hearing so I'm not sure if it's necessary to reopen it but I'm certainly happy to if you feel it is no if you feel good with that then I, felt I feel like that Andy that was clear right did you feel like that was a clear sense from Eric or do you want to hear it again? Um, that it was the end of January. Is that the question? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I guess the update that I was emailed earlier, it 
though I didn't get a time frame. There was a time frame on the Calvin, but there wasn't on the Iron Horse. Um, but I believe um, Randy had said that it, I don't know, like 10 minutes ago that, that Eric said that it would be done in the month of, by the end of January. Um, that, that, yeah, that's what I, that's what I, that's my understanding. Okay. Jennifer, are you satisfied with that, that it was said during? Yes. Okay. Um, so are we ready for a motion then? Oh my, yeah. Uh, um, okay, so I Wait, mean- Sorry, before yeah. we continue, what time is the meeting? Oh yes, thank you. Four o'clock. I mean, four four works for me if that works for everyone. Yep. yep. Um, is that uh? Yeah, I guess that's part of the motion. But we're not we're not like a, making a motion to change the date of that meeting, right? We're just mentioning when the right. the we're continuing to it. Okay. Um, so then I will make a motion to continue the public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual all alcohol restaurant license and transfer of a common fixture law license and entertainment license um, from Iron Horse Ventures, Inc. DBA, Iron Horse Music Hall to the Parlor Room, Inc. DBA, the Iron Horse 20 to 22 Center Street um, until the uh, next meeting of the License Commission, which is January 30th, 2024. Second. Um, Jennifer? Uh, yes, Jennifer. Do you want me to go? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes. All right, item nine, we have a continuation of a public hearing on an application for a transfer and change of location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license transfer from 2123 Center Street LLC DBA Center Street Cafe, the basement 21 Center Street transfer to Gombo Oyster Bar LLC 159 Main Street proposed manager of record is John Piscor. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? Move to open the public hearing. And is anyone present for public comment? Wait, sorry, I need a second. Oh, sorry, sorry, no. sorry. I second. Okay, and Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. Uh, is anyone present for public comment? Not seeing anybody, we can move in. I see John is here. Annie, can you unmute John? Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yep, we can hear you. How are you? How's everybody doing today? Fine. How are you? I'm doing okay. Good. Um, so I don't know if you've been on the meeting the whole time, but we just had the hearing with, regarding the Iron Horse. So I'm assuming, right. Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, the information is would be the same for uh, this license transferring to Gombo as the license transferring to the Iron Horse in terms of the timeline for paperwork. Yeah, I mean, um, I I think that, you know, there's a large conversation around the liquor license carousel as we speak right now, um, especially with the licenses that are on hand. Um, and I'm a little frustrated uh, just because of the fact that, you know, I went to market to compete. Um, and uh, I think that we need to do diligence at some point um, to either, you know, uh, there, there are options on the table. Um, and I feel like, you know, uh, we're not amateurs, uh, especially as business people. I think that, uh, you know, we know what we need to do. And so we need to get it done. And if not, then I would uh, ask that the um, city, you know, gives uh, at least some consideration to, you know, the patients that we, that I put in. Obviously, cost, it's going to cost our business money to um, to continue. And I'm fine with doing that. But um, we'd like to be able to get a resolution at some point. As would we. So that's really all I got. Okay. Eric, did you want to add anything during this hearing? No. No? Okay. Um, 
Jennifer and Helen, any questions or comments for John and Eric while we're in hearing? I don't Helen. know that I have questions. Go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah, I don't I don't have any any additional questions. Okay. Then is there a motion to close the hearing for commissioner discussion? A motion to close the hearing. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Okay. Um, so copy and paste are, um, I mean, it's the same situation. There isn't anything different. So I don't think any different application in our decision should be applied. I agree. Yeah. I think we, it's just the same. Okay. Then is there a motion? Yes, I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing on an application for transfer and change location on an annual all alcohol restaurant license as detailed in item nine on the agenda to the uh, next meeting of the license commission, which is January 30th, 2024. Second. You said January 30th? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right then, moving on, item number 10, we have another public hearing on an application for a change of classification on a seasonal wine and malt restaurant license for Masa Mexicano LLC, 176 Pine Street in Florence. This is a change of classification from seasonal to annual. And hello. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Not too bad, nice. Good. Just listening to the whole conversations, so. Interesting. Well, thank you for for uh, witnessing the conversations. <laughs> um, um, uh, so yeah, so I'm um, looking to. We just need to open the public hearing. Sorry. Oh, that's right. I'm so sorry. Oh, um, sorry. Is there yeah. a motion to open the public yeah. hearing? Yeah, I missed that. Sorry, motion to open the public hearing. Second. Uh, Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. And is there anyone here for public comment for this hearing? Seeing no hands, now we can move on. Okay. So you are seeking to um, go from your se a seasonal to an annual wine and malt. Yes. Great. So how's the how has the license been going for you thus far? It's been. It's positive. been yeah, it's been going great. Um, I haven't had any problems with anybody yet. Everybody seems to enjoy the additional options that we offer with the with the beer and the wine. So that's it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. Um and hopefully soon I'm gonna be able to get a plumber in there so I can start using real plates instead of paper plates to to it's just been a hassle getting a plumber to get my um dishwasher plumbed in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you guys have any questions or comments for this application? I don't have any questions, no. No, just I'm glad it's going well for you and I think it's a good move. So yeah, so hopefully, hopefully it'll be helpful for your business. Thank you. Yes, yeah. agreed. Um, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we close the hearing and discuss? Uh, not at the moment, no. Okay. Is there a motion then to close the hearing? Motion to close the hearing. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, I this I think this is great that he's able to do this at that time, this time. So I have no issues with moving this forward. Yeah, same here. No, yeah. I think it's great. It's great. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Quick question. Sorry. I, it just came to mind. Yeah. Um, I know the ABCC is behind on everything. So if I haven't heard anything back from them before January 15th, just I'm guessing stop selling anything with alcohol until I hear from them after that, right? Unfortunately, yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, is there a motion then to approve, move this forward? Wanna take it, Jennifer? Sure. 
to put forward a motion to approve the application for a change of classification on a seasonal wine and malt liquor license from Masa Mexicano as detailed in item number 10. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. All right, item number 11. We have an application for change of LLC managers on an annual wine and malt package store license. This is for Pride Operating LLC at 375 King Street. And I believe we have Jim Channing with us. Yes. I do. Good evening, attorney Jim Channing, 246 Cottage Street, Springfield, Mass for Pride Operating. We have a couple of uh, proposed corporate changes for your consideration. The first, uh, I think for the record, it's important to note that there's no change of ownership at all. In fact, Pride Convenience Holding will remain the owner. However, they will no longer be a LLC manager. We're proposing to have our CFO and our executive vice president added as additional LLC managers. And the last uh, request is just to have our CEO actually added as an actual officer filed with uh, the Secretary of State and the ABCC. Uh, of note, the retail manager remains the same as well. Uh, she's there. She's been there for quite a while. And uh, we love the job she's doing. Uh, so uh, I can tell you we're filing the same application for every uh, city and town that we have. Obviously, we acknowledge it's subject to the ABC review and approval as well. Great. Well, this is pretty straightforward and easy, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. We like I those. So. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. Um, Annie, we have all the paperwork in order, right? Yes. Okay. Great. That's very simple. Um, any Excellent. questions from Helen or Jennifer? No, not for me. Yep, no questions. And I think we're ready for a motion. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the application for change of LLC managers on an annual wine and malt package store license as detailed in item 11 on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you very much. Have a good holiday okay. season. Thank you, you too. Item number 12, public hearing. This might be a record for public hearings at a meeting. Yeah. And, um, public hearing on an application for a new all alcohol restaurant license pursuant to chapter 76 of the acts of 2023, more hospitality incorporated, DBA, the dirty truth, 29 main street proposed manager is Kyle Anderson. And is there a motion to open the public hearing? I move to open the public hearing. Anybody? Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Is there anyone present for public comment? Yep. How's it going? How are you? Good. Technically, you're not public comment. You're the star oh, of the sorry, show. Sorry. But <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have anybody for public comment. Hello, Kyle. How are you? <laughs> Got anxious after such a long meeting. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> oh, we're just starting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so congratulations, you're, you're, you're decked up for an all alcohol license. Yep. Um, do you have, did you want to share anything about any changes you're going to be making? Um, not too much will honestly change aside from, um, what we have access to. Um, we've been doing a cocktail program with the liqueurs and cordials that we can buy, um, and recently, actually, we found that there's a, a company in Massachusetts making like rum and gin and vodka cordials just for those types of license. So that was kind of a unique thing towards the end of our that license. Um, um, but yeah, um, everything should just um, move forward with more options. Um, I will be doing some training with my staff, getting them um, getting them all tip certified. Um, all of our managers are currently, but I wanna make sure everybody kind of understands the responsibility with uh, the all alcohol license. Great, that's great to hear. Uh, Jennifer and Helen, do you have any questions or comments for Kyle? No questions, just it's been a long time coming. So I'm glad <laughs> that uh, this is gonna work out. Assuming yeah. it's gonna work yes. out. <laughs> right. No spo spoiler alert, right? <laughs> <laughs> I also don't have any questions for you. No, thank okay. you. Um, Kyle, did you want to add anything else before we close the hearing? Uh, no, that'll be it. Okay. And is there a motion then to close the public hearing? 
I move to close the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, everything's in order here. This is it was great to be able to, to get some extra licenses from the state to accommodate more uh, businesses having them. So I think this is, I have no issues. Yeah. Yep, that's how I feel. Yeah. And would somebody like to make a motion? I'll take it, Jennifer. Sure. I make a motion to approve the application for an all alcohol restaurant license pursuant to chapter 76 of the acts of 2023 for more hospitality doing business as the dirty truth as detailed in, in agenda item number 12. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks for all your help. Yep. Congrats. Thanks. Item 13, public hearing and an application for a new all alcohol restaurant license pursuant to chapter 76 of the acts of 2023 for Washa and Ware Incorporated, DBA Jake's Restaurant, 17th <clears throat> Street. Proposed manager is Christopher Ware. And is there a motion to open the public hearing? Mm, I move to open the public hearing. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And uh, Yes. And do we have anyone here for public comment? And we don't. So Chris, you are up. Yes, hello. Hello, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes. I am doing, I'm well, how are you? Wonderful. Doing very well, thank you. Um, yes. So you wanna let us know what your plans are? Yes. So um, essentially, um, well, once again, we're very thankful um, that this legislation went through and uh, we essentially just want to expand our uh, beverage menu mm -hmm. um, and expand it to all alcohol and just get more creative and hopefully boost some revenue. Excellent. Right. And, yeah. Uh, I was very happy to hear Kyle share that, that over at the Dirty Truth, they'll be doing some training with all of their servers to bring people up to speed on the yes. responsibilities of having all alcohol. Yeah, so a number of my staff and my manager, um, as well as myself and my business partner, um, we are up to date on our tips and we are going to have all of our staff do the online course as well. Nice, excellent. It's great to hear. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. That was it. Hmm. Um, Jennifer and Helen, do you have anything that you want to ask Chris or add? I'm nope. just happy that this can happen. Yeah, the paperwork's complete. And yeah, me too. Yeah, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. We're very appreciative. Yeah. Great. All right. Then if nothing else needs to be added, uh, is there a motion for uh, to close the public hearing for discussion? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Um, same as Dirty Truth, I have I have no, there's no reason to not move this forward, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll just go for it then. Yep. Um, uh, motion to approve the application for a new all alcohol restaurant license pursuant to chapter 76 of the acts of 2023 for Washnut and Ware as detailed in item 13 on the agenda. Second. And Natasha. Natasha. Yes. <laughs> oh, you said yes. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear, <laughs> I didn't hear it either. Okay. Um, I think I said it in my head. Helen. <laughs> yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Excellent. All right. Item 14. Request by Calvin Theater Corporation so to thanks. Oh, see you, Chris. Thank you. Um, request by Calvin Theater Corporation to modify the executed settlement agreement to extend the deadline in paragraph six as amended by vote of the commission on October 2nd, 2023, from December 1st, 2023 to January 31st, 2024, and for the transfer application to be placed on the February 21st, 2024 license commission meeting agenda. Okay, so um Annie, do you have anything that you want to update or add to that? I know that you received the lease. I did not receive a lease. 
um, I, I received the document that I included in your meeting. The packet. letter? The letter, yes. Okay. Um, it sounds like they expect to have a completed and signed lease by tomorrow. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, that was my misunderstanding. Okay. Um, and is will that signed lease come to the city? Is that an expectation that's baked in or is that um, something that wouldn't? Not typically. It will, it will be included with the application packet to transfer the license. Um, so that's one of the required documents when um, the transfer or the transfer E um, submits the application. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, it makes sense to extend this. Right. And then um, my question would be now that we've um, changed the date of the January meeting, are we still, does it still make sense to extend it to for the February 21st meeting or could things be ready by the January 30th meeting? And I don't know if that's a question for Eric. Or, or is it necessary to do that because you know both parties have has at, have asked for February twenty first and if February twenty first is fine and follow up question <laughs> we're talking about just changing the January thirtieth meeting right it's not like then going forward we're going to have I mean that's just a special change for that one okay yeah you know, that that's just to try and account, give accommodate the time that they need for the paperwork okay. and this agenda item is so it's to extend the deadline in paragraph six of the executed settlement agreement, which basically says that there needs to be a transfer application by January 31st. Um, right. So it, it, it would have to be the February meeting because there, there's gonna need to be a legal notice in the paper, which you can't have a meeting okay. um, and no sooner than 10 days after the publication. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't even it wouldn't be able to be placed on the January 30th agenda. Okay, yeah. Thanks for answering that. That's yeah. I get it. Okay. Um do you need a vote on this, Annie? Yeah. On this request? Um, yeah. Okay. I have I don't have any issues with it. Um Helen and Jennifer, do you guys have any issues with the extension for this? I do not. No. No issues. Okay. And somebody like to make a motion. Honestly, be the um the agenda item. Sorry, what? The the motion can be just the agenda item minus the request by. But oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to modify the executed settlement agreement to extend the deadline in paragraph six as amended by vote of the commission on October second, twenty twenty three, from December first, twenty twenty three to January 31st, 2024, and for the transfer application to be placed on the February 21st, 2024 License Commission meeting agenda. Second. Um, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Happy holidays as well, everyone. You too, Eric. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Eric. Thank you for your help. Uh, item number 15, we have a discussion and a vote to determine the means of issuance of the remaining three all alcohol liquor licenses in accordance with chapter 76 of the acts of 2023. Annie, do you want me to read the rest of that agenda item? Uh, no, you don't have to. It's, that was really just for your reference, the, okay. like um, detailing out your charge of how you can issue these three licenses. Okay. Um, so, I mean, nothing is like it used to be, right? <laughs> we used to do a lottery for the licenses. And um, now with the holdup in uh, paperwork for the Iron Horse and um, the uh, and Gombo licenses, that brings into play, I think, these other three available licenses. And if we could utilize them 
in the event the paperwork continues to delay helping these other ventures get moving. Does that make sense? What I just said? Yeah, sort of, yeah. <laughs> I'll hold them for the, um, for the potential of future applications sort of, you know, um, those licenses. Yeah. So, meaning withhold, not doing a lottery at this point in time. Right. It's sort of in anticipation of what we don't know is going to happen in a month. <laughs> um, exactly. I would, I would not, I mean, the whole, the whole point of getting the, of, of appealing the state for more licenses is for the economic development of Northampton, right? And the Iron Horse and the Calvin and Gombo, all of these places are equally important in the economic vitality of downtown Northampton. Um, and I think especially like the public support and outpouring and just the joy that people have had around the very idea that the Iron Horse is going to reopen. Mm -hmm. It's that's good for business, you know, just knowing that's happening. And I don't want the um, whatever is happening on the current license holders end to impact that. So my preference with these three remaining over quota licenses would be to um, not make any decisions tonight I want to do with them and hold them in the event that we need them to assist in a month's time. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with that. How would it be worded in the, and, and then of course, Jennifer, I wanna hear what you think, but just curious how that would be worded um, in a motion. Right, because we need to have a motion or, yeah, um, a motion a vote. or are we just having a discussion about it? It's a Honestly, vote. yeah, I don't think there would need to be a vote. I know it's on the agenda, but it doesn't, just because it's there doesn't mean it needs to take place. Um, okay. Because you're not doing with anything with them yet. They're just kind of still sitting and it's, I mean, they're not going anywhere and it's at the commission's sole discretion. No one else can decide what to do with the licenses, not the mayor, not the city, it's nobody, just you as a body. So um, I think a discussion is fine and no vote is required. So there'd be a vote if we were being active with them, but there's no vote to be inactive with them. Yes, yeah, so if, <laughs> if you were deciding what to do with them time. instead of them just right. sitting, sitting, waiting to be put to use, then yes, there would need to be a vote, but there is no decision yet, so. Yeah. Danny, I would just like to confirm that 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 is within our purview to decide to not use them. That that is an acceptable license commission. commission not decision. forever, but for right now. Yeah, the commission gets to just it has the sole authority on what happens to these licenses. Um, so if if it doesn't want to act on it right now, it doesn't have to. I think there is maybe there is. I'm not. Um, fully versed on the language of this act yet. Um, but I think there is a maybe a period of three years that has to be acted mm -hmm. on. Um so yeah, this yes, this is so thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yes. And I, I also just want to acknowledge I'm really grateful that we have these licenses <laughs> because of the kind of remarkably frustrating circumstances of this entire process. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, Helen, you touched on it in your comments earlier that we're talking about livelihoods, you know, we're talking about real stuff and that just adds a whole other element to this entire process. And I am very grateful that we have these three, these three licenses. Oh, sure. Yeah. And the deadlines, Natasha, I mean, there hasn't been a breaking point deadline yet, but at some point, I think Randy yeah. would agree that, you know, that at some point deadlines really matter. Totally. Yep. And it can't, we can, yeah. 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 I mean, there's our decision. Do we, do we continue something? Do we put a drop dead deadline on it? But then there's the reality of people have to actually exactly moving on their end. So um, I'm, I'm glad as a commission that we're able to, to come to agreement on that and, and do what we can to make it all right but so uh, I guess so just 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 to um just 
for confirmation, all licenses granted under the special act need to be issued within three years after the effective date of this act, which was November 22nd. We got that covered. Yep. Yeah, I think Thank that you, would not be a problem. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We're not, we don't like sitting on these things. So no problem. Okay. Um, do we need to discuss anything else where that is concerned if we're if we're not going to do anything about it right now? Uh, are you asking me? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Are, okay. are the commissioners ready to move on to the next agenda item, or did you want to say anything else? No, I'm ready. I'm ready to move. Ready to move. <laughs> I'm ready to move on the next one too. <laughs> Would you like to uh, approve the minutes of sure. November 15, 2023? I move to approve the minutes of November 15, 2023. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Colin? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Item 17 clerk updates. 2024 renewals, request to change the January meeting time and open gov go live, which I'm most excited to hear about, but we can start with the renewals. So the renewals, nothing really to report except for all liquor licenses have been renewed. Um, we're still waiting on one inspection for NoHo Social, but it's supposed to be completed by the end of the year. I think they just had to get their, in, uh, their fire sprinkler system inspected before they building and fire departments would sign off on their inspection certificate. Um, the deadline for all non-liquor licenses was last Friday. I'm still waiting on 15, which is actually pretty good. Um, so I will be closing them through the end of the year and get their, get their stuff, their act together. Um, that's all I have for that, unless you have questions. I do not. No. Okay. No um, questions. The request to change the meeting, January, January meeting time, that has that has been satisfied. Yeah. Um, and then the open gov go live. So um, the go live date has been set. Um, licensing gets to go first. Um, I think because I am the most prepared. Um, <laughs> nice. And so it's January 15th, which is MLK Day, um, which I just realized yesterday. So I don't know how that'll work. But um, so I'm going live with two record types. Um, OpenGov works with each department, and they only, were only allotted two record types, unless, I mean, they're $10,000 per record type. So unfortunately, I couldn't get them all built for me. Um, so the ones that I'm going live with are short-term licenses, one-day licenses, and then all liquor license transactions. So I was able to, instead of having one um, record type per license, liquor transaction, like a new license, a transfer, an amendment, a change of manager, um, every, that's all in one. Um, so I, yes, yeah, so those are the two record types I'm going live with. Um, so I guess for your state, well, so beginning of January, I'll send out a communication to all license holders and all liquor license holders, and then all, everyone that typically applies for a short-term license and just kind of let them know of this change and what to expect. Um, and then... I guess the only other thing is the way the information is going to be transmitted to you will be different because we're doing away with paper applications. Um, and so everything's going to be online. Um, I don't know how that's going to play out yet or how that's going to work, but I will make sure that you have everything you need. Because, um, I mean, the ABCC needs their information sent to their portal. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'll just, I, I don't know. I don't know how it'll happen, but I will make sure that you have everything you need. It'll just maybe come in a different, it'll look different because um, mm -hmm. there won't be paper copies. Right. Um, and then- Is it, so, can I ask you, Annie, is it something that you can just like create a PDF or something from or- Yeah, I mean, they're all, they all come 
<laughs> back end portal where I go in and it, there's like steps to the process, like an administrative review and then a license commission meeting and then they have to pay a fee and then they have to upload all their attachments, like their required documents. And then, um, and then there's a period where it would go to the HCC and then, and then at the end, the license automatically gets issued to them, like it gets emailed to them. So I don't have to like do any of that anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be great. Um, it's a lot of work, um, but it's going to be good and it's going to be a learning curve for a lot of people. Um, but this is this is the way of the times. We need to be moving forward towards. I mean, we're the only like one of the only municipalities not around not using a online permitting system. Yeah. Um, and OpenGov works with mm -hmm. ninety plus municipalities in Massachusetts. So sorry, someone just rang my doorbell. I'm just gonna. Oh. <laughs> How bizarre. That is <laughs> so old-fashioned. Who does that these days? God, we better listen for screams. I hope everything's okay. Um, <laughs> she can't be good. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, is yeah. that for, when you say, Annie, when you say it's a lot of work, is it, you're saying like to prep it to get to the, I mean, the, theoretically, isn't it the whole idea that in the future it'll be less? Yes, work? no, it's a lot of work in that yeah. it's consuming my every day, all day. And gotcha. um, now that OpenGov has created two record types, I have to create the rest. So I have to go build applications for common vic entertainment all that and then it's it's yeah it's a lot but mm -hmm. um it's gonna be it's gonna be good in the long run and then and the, the goal is to have every city department on the system talking to each other so then when there's an entertainment license coming up then i can send it to fire and they would have to sign off on it before it moves to the next step in right. the process yeah that was um, my other question yeah, yeah. so and unfortunately, I get to go first. I'm the guinea pig. So, and then it's EPW and planning, and then we will we'll go from there. So, um, yeah. it's your punishment for being so good at what you do. I know everyone's like you're you're, but you're so well prepared. I'm like I shouldn't have been because now. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm kind of getting it out of the way and just start like slow up a little more. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's gonna be good. Amherst uses it, Cambridge uses it, all the all the places that people like to compare Northampton to uses it. So um and we did a demo with a bunch of software companies and they were by far the best. So it's gonna be Great. good. It's gonna be good. good. So that's that's what I have on that. That's that on there. Do you happen to know if the health department's gonna be yeah, whatever? We don't need to get into that. They I'm will just... eventually they will eventually. And stuff. Okay. Yeah. I thought a year or the last update I gave you, I said it, this was years to come um, because I was I was under the impression that every city department and every record type had to be uploaded onto the system before we went live. But apparently that's not the case and that was not communicated to me. So it's more of like a gradual thing. And this is how every other municipality does it. West Springfield uses it too. And they you start with a few record types and then you just build on that. Oh, good. Um, good. So, yeah. Jennifer, did you get a gift at the door? Is that what happened? Yes, I can't believe it. <laughs> I hope someone rings my doorbell. Great. Well, it's funny because I saw someone's hair, and I don't know if anyone knows my son, but he's just a skinny kid with great big hair. So I'm like, it could be a friend. And it was somebody, yeah, just made some bread and dropped us off and wanted to wish us all a Merry Christmas. That's that really nice. Neighborly. <laughs> oh, I'm so touched. <laughs> nice. nice people out there yes yeah. <laughs> had some in the meeting today even yeah lots of them actually yeah <laughs> um oh, and each of you i should have done oh, sorry nice for all of you but <laughs> anything else on the open gov no not unless there's questions Um, I don't know if you missed much, Jennifer. <coughs> Everything's going online. And and others, <laughs> the surrounding communities have done it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so we can do it. We're catching up. Yeah, yeah finally. Yeah. If Annie's excited, I'm all.
know if it'll help her so, then it'll help us so, i'm anxious yeah. but oh, of course in the long in in the long run it's gonna be good because i went through this renewal season this year and i just i, I just said to someone in my office i said if i had to do this again next year i wouldn't be in this job i just can't it's just too much paperwork yeah it's too much admin it's just i'm i'm over it so it's yeah it was tedious so here we are we're moving forward onward and upward good. Good, good, good. Um, any new business for me? Nothing here. No. Nope. Okay. Um. So just to confirm, our next meeting is January thirtieth. January thirtieth at four p.m. via Zoom. Okay. Right. Great. Then, would someone like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn until next year, everyone. Oh my goodness. Yes, happy holidays, everybody. Happy second. Happy New Year. Woo. Uh, hope to see you all maybe out and about. In the um, next hold on. Sorry. Jennifer, oh. I need mean, Natasha. Oh. Yes. Um, Helen. Yes. And Jennifer.